Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BTN HD. And yes, build 19536 is having issues with VMware. Ah, oh, yes. So let's get started. So how to fix this problem. So I'm actually using a virtual machine within VMware. Uh, and this is my insider preview machine, which I test all the builds out that Microsoft pushes out within the fast ring. Uh, if I right click on the start menu, go to run, type in WinVER, click OK, you're going to see that I'm running 19041, right? I need the latest build. What's going on, right? So I noticed a nice little icon on your taskbar where the time is at. And that little icon indicates there's a Windows update. So I double clicked on it. It opened up Windows update. I need to update my machine to 19536. So it was ready. It was pending a restart. So I clicked on restart. It started restarting. It started doing its thing. Please wait. And boom. I'm saying to myself, wait a minute. Why did I get this? So I went, I went with the flow. I clicked on US. Troubleshoot and turn off PC. This is not part of the installation part. So I, I rebooted the machine. Okay, I said to myself, okay, probably a glitch. It was a quick update so i logged into the machine i right clicked on my start menu went to run type in WinVER, press ok and i'm still stuck on 19041 what the hell happened to that you know new build so i go back inside the windows updates and it gives me this nice little uh error encountered i looked up 0xc1900101 online and it took me to a microsoft site and it gave me a bunch of problems one of the things that microsoft wanted me to do was locate or download the windows update troubleshooter so that's what i did i opened up my browser typed in windows update troubleshooter i clicked on the link it started downloading i clicked on the little arrow i say save as i, I dropped it inside my downloads folder i opened up the folder took me directly to the downloads folder i right clicked on the file and i hit open so it gave me this nice little wizard. So I clicked on next, started detecting any problems, and it said, okay, can we run this particular wizard or this troubleshooter as an admin? So I say, okay, running as an administrator. So I clicked on next, detecting the problem. It started checking for any pending restarts, started initializing a diagnostic test on the machine. It started bit services because I'm assuming it stopped it and restarted it. And boom, troubleshooting, couldn't identify any problems. So I said to myself, for real, damn. So I shut down the machine. And uh, again, I did a little bit more Googling. And it looks like it's a controller problem within VMware, right? By default, when I created my virtual machine, it created an iSCSI controller. That iSCSI controller is attached to the hard drive, which, you know, has the operating system. So I launched up my vCenter. Uh, I went inside my virtual machine and I went inside the config tab. I clicked on edit and within edit to make this work, I needed to create a SATA controller. So on new devices, I clicked on the drop down and I clicked on SATA controller. I clicked on add. I clicked on OK, started configuring itself. So I added the controller, right? Then I clicked on edit again. As you can see, the SATA controller is there. So what I did was I hit the new device drop down menu and I clicked on existing hard disk, right? Clicked on that again. I located basically my Windows uh, preview insider virtual machine, the VMDK file. I located that file because I'm reattaching that virtual machine into a new hard drive, which is attached to a SATA controller. Pressed OK. And then what I did was on the new hard drive, I clicked on the little arrow to expand it and I went all the way to the bottom because remember when you create a new hard disk, it's going to automatically put it inside the SCSI controller. We want to switch that all the way to the bottom where it says virtual device nod. Click on the drop down and pick SATA controller zero and then press OK. Now you're going to see that you got two hard drives. This one is the iSCSI. This two is your SATA. We need to remove one. So I'm going to remove this one. You don't want both operating systems. Remember, we have this one, this two with the same operating system. This one needs to be removed. So this two could be the primary. So when the virtual machine is started, it would boot up. So that's what I did. Clicked on it to remove it. 
nice little X to remove it, pressed OK, and I got this problem. Apparently, the virtual machine should not have any snapshots. So I went back and forth. I like to use vCenter as well as the client, so sue me. I went inside the client, and I located my preview machine. I went inside the snapshot manager. I found that particular snapshot, and I deleted it. I hit yes on that. And it started doing its thing. See, in the recent task, it started, you know, uh, removing it. And once it's completed, good to go. So I went back, right? Went back inside that virtual machine. I had to do everything again, basically uh, attach a new SATA controller, uh, attach a new existing hard disk, and point it to that virtual machine disk. And then I was able to, then I was basically able to select disk one, the original disk one, which was attached to the iSCSI controller and delete it with no problem, right? So I started the virtual machine. I was like, all right, this is gonna work. And boom, I got this. I was like, holy crap, did I just corrupt my virtual machine? My insider preview virtual machine, I had this for so long and I, I messed it up. So I was like, okay, if this is no problem, I'm gonna let it reboot. It started rebooting itself a couple of times and I just left it be. I went to lunch, came back, and I saw this. I was like, okay, I, I think I got sick and tired of itself rebooting constantly. So it's trying to prepare for the automatic repair. Then it started doing the diagnostics on the PC. Then I got this. I said, oh, serious? Oh my gosh. So I went inside advanced option. I went to troubleshoot. I'm not going to reset the PC, so I went inside Advanced Options, and I said, okay, let me just do a startup repair. Why not, right? Started doing the diagnostics on the PC again, started checking the disk for any errors, and I got this. Startup repair couldn't repair your PC. So I was like, holy moly, seriously? So I was like, okay, I give up. So I shut down the machine. I was like, oh, no, nah, I can't. I can't do this. So I start the machine again, and I just leave it be, and eventually it launches up, it loads up. I log into the machine. When I'm finally inside the desktop, that's a good thing because the machine is working. So I go inside Windows Updates and boom, the update is there, 19.5.3.6. That's the one that did not work within an iSCSI environment. So right now my machine is on a SATA controller environment. So let's click on Restart. It started restarting. It started saying 40% complete, which was a good thing because before this, went, this wasn't there. It went straight into the reboot. So when the screen, the resolution shrunk on the virtual machine, I said, okay, the update is actually being pushed out. Boom. When the resolution got bigger and I saw 88%, I was like, yes, I got super excited. And eventually when it was done, I logged into the machine. I right clicked on the start menu, clicked on run. I typed in WinVER, hit OK, and boom, the machine got updated to 19.536. Hallelujah. So... To get this up and running, you have to do the following. Make sure your virtual machine does not have any snapshots. I know. Next, you need to add a SATA controller. Once you add a SATA controller, add an existing hard drive and point it to that VMDK file of your virtual machine. Then remove that hard drive, which is attached to the iSCSI controller. Once you do all that, reboot. There's a good chance you might get issues like I did. And just let Windows 10 try to repair it by itself. And once it's done, you're able to go inside your machine. If you're if you're worried, which I was, I should have took a snapshot once I was already part of the <laughs> my environment. Then go in, check if the update is there, restart your machine, let it push it out, and you're good to go. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave comments right below. Don't forget about hitting that like button. And make sure you subscribe and share out the video. And I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.